Hi guys. Well, I don't know what the hell happened to our beautiful day here in the collapse of everything. It has turned into a dark, nasty, chilly, uh, feeling like winter coming on kind of day. It is a Monday afternoon, October 7th, 2024, and I'm uh, trying to decide uh, between two chronicles of the collapse and so instead of just making one long chronicle I think what I will do is just read the first third to half of two different chronicles and make two short videos instead of one big one today so let's just start off right here uh, from fellow collapsitarian Ugo Bardi of the Seneca Cliff fame. I have had the pleasure of interviewing, is it Ugo or Ugo, here on Collapse Chronicles. You can find that interview somewhere. But uh, I think his regular website is called the Seneca Effect. Uh, and so today, uh, where are we headed? The great world rush toward the Seneca Cliff, the philosophy of take what you can when you can. I don't know, is that part of enjoy it while you still can? Does that include take what you can when you can? But anyway, uh, I'm not going to get in uh, to the Middle East portion of this. I'm just going to, we're going to read the first one-third of uh, Ugo's thing, more of a, a big picture before he zeroes in on the smaller picture. I'll put the link and you can, uh, you can uh, finish this out yourself. Uh, <clears throat> Nafiz Ahmed pinpoints our problem perfectly well in his blog in a post titled War with Iran, the Planetary Phase Shift and Global System Paralysis. And I haven't even gone over to Nafiz's. I haven't heard, you know, I've I just let Nafiz Ahmed somehow slip through the cracks. I'm going to have to dig around and, and uh, bring some Nafiz back out. Uh, thank you, Ugo, for reminding me of Nafiz Ahmed. Anyway, back to Ugo. <coughs> we are seeing a war for resources a mad rush to maintain control over what little is left at the cost of destroying everything and everyone on the path. And that pretty well sums it up. Uh, Ahmed's interpreta interpretation highlights our powerlessness, democracy, theoretically means domain by the people, but the people cannot do anything to stop our homicidal leaders from doing whatever they think will provide them with even more power. Akili Bembe uh, was among the first to note the degradation of Western democracies in 2003 when he wrote his essay, Necropolitics, later turned into a book with the same title. And uh, he has links, uh, Ugo has links to all of these other essays that I haven't gotten to. I guess M-B-E-M-B-E -M -B -E is pronounced either Membe or Bembe, says, quote, as for democracies, remember this was 21 years ago, as for democracies, they have not ceased to be emptied out 
and to be altered in their regime as fantasies and accidents are now their sole subject matter, they have now become unpredictable and paranoid anarchic powers without symbols, devoid of meaning and destiny, lacking in justification, only ornament remains to them. Nothing henceforth is inviolable, nothing is inalienable, and nothing is imperceptible, except perhaps property so far, remember 21 years ago, in these conditions, it might well be that at the bottom, no one is the citizen of any state in particular, close quote. Back to Ugo here, uh, 21 years after that analysis. In short, we are facing a catastrophic collapse of governance with democracy reduced to a tragedy or a farce, probably both. Who is at the helm? Maybe that nebulous entity we call at times the deep state. It plays the same role as the dark force and the dark matter in cosmology, entities whose existence we postulate to explain what we see, but of which we can say nearly nothing. Well, I guess except that it's out to kill Donald Trump. They, meaning the deep state, are not observable by any instrument known to man although I can think, I, I think they will be fairly easy to observe uh, at the upcoming COP29 conference. I think the deep state will be pretty much uh, all over that one like it is every year. I would look at the, uh, the big oil lobbyist. Uh, if you're wondering uh, what one big branch of the deep state is, uh, go over to COP29 and look at the list of oil lobbyists, uh, you know, uh, guiding, spearheading, and guiding uh, climate policy uh, for the planet, and you will see the deep state. But anyway, I'm getting off track. I'm just trying to help Ugo out, trying to define who the deep state is now that Henry Kissinger is dead. All right. How did we arrive at this? There was a time after World War II when the illusory abundance created by cheap fossil fuels made it possible to imagine a future in which peace could be attained by collaboration among the peoples of the world, that it was possible to think that the poor nations could rise to levels of prosperity comparable to those of the rich ones, and that everyone would have been happy with that. The first wrench thrown in the gears with, of this idea was the limits to growth. You know, the first ain't gonna happen uh, little flicker. Uh, what was the limits to growth report to the Club of Rome published in 1972? Now, of course, a lot of uh, people voting for Donald Trump would claim that the Club of Rome uh, is one of the biggest deep state operatives uh, on the planet, that anybody uh, pointing out that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet clearly, clearly is a member of the deep state, New World Order, 
uh, leading the depopulation agenda to kill us all. Uh, if Ugo Bardi is looking for what a lot of conspiratards would call the deep state, I would suggest he uh, look up the Club of Rome, of which he is a, I'm pretty surely Ugo Bardi uh, has got to be a, a big player in the Club of Rome. So maybe uh, maybe Ugo needs to look in the uh, in the mirror to find the deep state that all these Trump tards are talking about. But anyway, I'm just keep getting off uh, track here, looking for the deep state. Back to the limits of growth, published in 1972, that report told us that prosperity would not last forever, that the world's economy was going to go through a cycle of growth and decline, that it would start falling like a stone at some moment during the first few decades of the 21st century. Huh. It, meaning the limits of growth, you know, at least when it was published, was not a prophecy of doom. It was a warning. It was based on the idea that humankind's future could and should be managed, that governments existed for the benefit of the people, that it was possible to arrive at shared decisions on the basis of the democratic process. Many of us are still operating according to a view of the world based on these concepts. But now that we have entered an age of terrible scarcity of resources, this view has become obsolete. Well, it's become obsolete to Ugo Barty and the uh, few of us uh, crawling around down here in the cesspool of the doomosphere. It, it, it is obvious to one one hundredth of one percent of the clueless morons on the planet, including the deep state and the shallow state and every state in between. 99.99% of this world's population are, are, are still suffering from these delusions which is the reason for my ain't gonna happen roundup rant for uh, each Friday. Uh, whoever is in charge, if anyone, what we can observe is that the system is desperately trying to continue in the extractive paradi paradigm. The leaders, the rich, the poor, the workers, the retirees, everyone, they are all thinking in the same way. And more than 50 years of warnings that if something cannot continue, it will have to have, it will have to stop have led to nothing. We are only left with the attempt of drilling more, extracting more, killing more. The attempt to maintain the old ways at all cost is the perfect way to create the Seneca collapse, meaning nothing stair-step about it. Uh, in Ugo's view, I mean, oversimplifying, you know, just going over the cliff. Uh, but even that cliff, you know, I mean, even the Seneca cliff isn't going to happen between Tuesday and Wednesday, but it could happen between 2030 and 2040. Uh, anyway, it, meaning the Seneca collapse was not unavoidable, 
you know, back in, uh, supposedly back in uh, 1972, but it was not avoided, and now it is the direction the world is taking. But this is not the end of the world. It is the end of a world. What we are seeing are the spasms of the old system that desperately refuses to die and in doing so creates a lot of damage to everything, everybody, and itself. Better times will come. Hmm, we shall see. But as for all birth, but as for all births, there will be plenty of pain in the process. So even Ugo Bardi is holding out to uh, to uh, a, a better world on the other side of the bottleneck uh, after uh, after hitting the bottom of the Seneca Cliff and looking a whole lot like Chimney Rock, North Carolina. Uh, we can see. Uh, what Ugo's better world will look like after after the pain. Uh, anyway, uh, but I'm not. He goes from there into zeroing in more on that all those various kerfuffles going on over there. In uh, in uh, the Middle East, but I'm gonna let him. You can go on the link and finish out. But we're gonna go over uh, in a separate chronicle back over to Dave Pollard's with his synopsis of the book, The Rogue Primate. We will make that a a separate chronicle of the collapse coming up here in a minute on this increasingly winter chill day. My gosh. <laughs>